Hi there, it's Sarah from Campilates and uh, today we're doing a prenatal video for healththisat.com and it's the third trimester so you're almost there ready to give birth it's probably the most demanding one on your body because the belly is growing so it's the time to stay strong to stay flexible so that your body can cope with the additional weight of the pregnancy which pulls everything a little bit forward so it's a quite a good time to to stay focused right so I want you to come back into your neutral positioning. If you've seen my other videos, then you know that your feet will have to be hip width apart. And I want you to start swaying to the front and to the back. So it's quite, just quite a nice way of getting in touch with the floor, feeling how the weight is distributed. And I want you to stop where you feel very sturdy. Slightly bend the knees, and that should allow you to tilt the pelvis. Now take your hands on the waistband and feel how the waistband is tipping as you sort of tilt your pelvis. Make it smaller and smaller until the waistband at the front and the back is just the same, so they're level. And that is a good way of finding your neutral pelvis. When you're pregnant, especially in the third trimester, you're more prone to actually tilt the pelvis backwards because there's just a lot of weight here and that's going to tilt everything out of alignment. So I want you to be really focused in getting that neutral so that you're training the right way and you're not aggravating your positioning. Instead, we're trying to sort of counter it. So imagine your head being lifted to the ceiling by a piece of string and open up the whole spine, also the back of the neck. Rotate the shoulders, draw them away from the ears and just open through the collarbones. So you've got a nice opening and the scapulae are perfectly placed. Right, all about the breathing. So take your hands onto the lower rib cage, fingertips touch in the middle. Breathe in right into the rib cage as you breathe out, belly button into the spine. Breathe in once more. As you breathe out, pull in lift the pelvic floor. Obviously your tummy is quite big at the moment but you can still on the out breath hug the baby into the body right so breathe in as you breathe out hug the baby into the body I've got two babies myself so I know what it's like to be fully pregnant and still do Pilates one more one more and it's absolutely doable it's just Focus on the baby coming into the body and lifting the pelvic floor and that will give you that kind of tension we're looking for. Last one. Breathe in, breathe out. Well done. Relax your shoulders down. Perfect. So from here we're going into our roll down. So come to the edge of your mat, facing towards the mat. Find your uh, perfect alignment. I always say do a quick body scan. So feet are perfectly aligned, soft knees, pelvis is neutral, long spine, shoulders back. Breathe in at the top. As you breathe out, you just do a gentle head nod, shoulders come forward, don't move the hips, tummy moves in. So as you're breathing out, you should immediately think pulling in, because as you're breathing out in Pilates, you're always pulling in the abdominals and lifting the pelvic floor, let the head just hang. Now on the way up, make sure you're not pushing your hips forward, let the hips stay where they are, breathe in as you breathe out, come up. So imagine that your, your legs and your hips are set in a plaster cast and you wouldn't be able to move them. So don't be tempted. Tummy moves in, lift the pelvic floor, stack the vertebrae, shoulders drop, head lifts. Two more, breathe in at the top. Breathe out, deflate. So this is a really lovely mobilizer for the spine. And lower back pain is very common in pregnancy because as I just described, your pelvis is out of alignment. Well, can be. Breathe in as you breathe out, start rolling up. That's it. Perfect, so it's absolutely fine. Last one, we're going to stay low. So breathe in here as you breathe out. Now, as your tummy is bigger, you'll find that you can't come as close to your body. So you'll probably be a bit more rounded here. And that's absolutely fine. So don't feel like you have to be close to your feet like I am. Obviously, you go with the shape of your body. You may even find you want to open the legs a bit more to allow your belly to be there. Absolutely no problem. So from here, I want you to walk onto hands and knees. So bend your knees, come safely down, hands under the shoulders and knees under the hips. Right, we're going to do swimming in a box, which doesn't look anything like swimming. 
stretch, it's a random name, isn't it? Hands on the shoulders, knees on the hips. Make sure that your hands and your knees are in a line so that you've got two parallel lines, really. So you want to keep that in mind. Right. Imagine that there's a line connecting opposite hand and knee. You would make a cross. Where the cross meets, imagine that's your center. It will help you to keep your balance, you'll see why. Because as you're breathing out, I want you to start moving opposite hand and knee away from the starting position. Now stay in contact. I want you to make sure that the hips stay where they are. Nothing changes, nothing changes. Start lifting. Hold your center, hold your center. So your center is here, not on the supporting arm. You reach. Now imagine you're trying to touch the wall in front of you and the wall behind you, so lengthen, 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 and then slowly come back. Now, as you come back, I don't want you to suddenly shift your weight onto the knee that's coming down, because your weight is center, not on your knee, that's it. So there should be minimal movement, other side breathing. As you breathe out, center yourself, hold your core in, start moving away, that's it. Extend. So from the top, if I would be looking down on you, Nothing should move between the shoulders and the hips. Well done. So breathe in, breathe out two more. I'll show you what happens when you don't engage your core. Suddenly you're just reaching, your hip goes out of alignment, your shoulder pops up, and I'm feeling this in my lower back and my core is doing nothing. So that's not what we're looking for. I want you to make sure your hips are in line, bring your center back, reach, shoulder away from the ears, and you feel it working in your core. You're also stretching out, that's it, last one. So as you place it back, don't transfer your weight, your weight should be here, not on the supporting knee. Breathe in, breathe out. Reach. And bring it back in, well done. And then just sit back onto the heels, into child pose and relax. If you like, you can take your hands around. Just open the knees so that your tummy has room. And breathe, and then from here, gently come up. We're going to come onto your side, into a side plank. So I want your elbow to come down and place it underneath your shoulder. Knees are at the front, but your ankles, hips, and shoulders are in one line, all right? So you just make sure that you're perfectly aligned here. Now. The difference between Pilates and just hanging out is the waist. So I want you to imagine there's a candle, you don't want to touch the waist, uh, the flame. So you want your waist to be as high as you can, really lift away, and that is the perfect starting position. Now use your hand to get yourself up into a half side plank. So you want to be here and lift away. If this is too hard for you, you take breaks because it can be very demanding on the shoulder, especially with the extra weight of the baby. So you just see how it goes. Now, when you're here, I want you to breathe in wide into the rib cage. As you breathe out, pull the baby into the body. So pull in and you'll feel your waist working. That's it, breathe in. As you breathe out, pull in. Breathe in. As you breathe out, belly button towards the spine, baby in, lift the pelvic floor if you can, two more. Breathe in as you breathe out, pull in, pull in, pull in. Doing well, last one. That's it, breathe out. So if you take breaks, just join us again when you're ready and then come down. I want you now to slide your legs out and come down. Now when you're on your side in Pilates, it's all about stacking the hips properly. Not the easiest uh, thing to do, so I'm just gonna talk you through it. So you want your ankles to be perfectly aligned, so stack them on top. I want you to be able to see your feet. Now for the hips to be perfectly aligned here, you can't slouch in your waist, right? So just put your hand underneath your waist and it shouldn't be touching. So try and get your waist slightly away. It's harder when you're 40 weeks pregnant, totally understand, but still try and lift it a little bit so that there is this uh, movement going upwards because otherwise, look what happens with this hip bone. If I slouch here, this hip bone pops up. So draw it away and then you've got your perfect alignment here. Now breathe in as you breathe out, I want you to float both legs. Now. If this is too hard for you, you may want to touch down with your toes, but keep your heels lifted with the bottom leg. That's only if you need to. Otherwise, both legs are floating. 
we're going to walk to the front and to the back. Now imagine that I'm putting a cup of tea on your top hip bone. So this is your focus. This should not move. Breathe in. As you breathe out, I want you to walk to the front. And as you breathe in, it goes back to the starting position. Breathe out, walk to the back. Make sure your foot goes back. Some people somehow prefer one side and don't do the other. So make sure you do both. And join again. So breathe in, breathe out. Now, if you feel quite stable, you can take that hand away and use more core strength to get, your, you, to get the movement there. So breathe out, pull in, rather than having the hands. The stability is now coming from your core. That's it. Breathe in, breathe out. So if you feel this is too hard or you're wobbling too much, place the feet or at least the toes down for a bit of stability. Also, your hands can be here for support as well. I'm just layering the exercise, so hopefully you find a level that suits you. Last two, so one more back and one more forward. That's it, and forward. So this is quite good for stability in the pelvis and relax, well done. So from here, just come into seated, just to stretch out the side, take your hands near your feet, reach through the fingers, mermaid stretch, really try and touch the ceiling and then come over. Perfect. If you find it uncomfortable to sit like this, you can always uncurl a leg if you prefer. Well done. Now before we do the other side, I'm going to stretch out your hip flexors. So come to hands and knees. So hip flexors, if your pelvis is out of alignment uh, in pregnancy, your hip flexors will shorten. So what we want you to do is to stretch them out. Take your hands a bit forward. I want you with a little bit of momentum, I want you to swing your leg to the front. Now, if you get stuck, all you have to do is kind of gently get your foot to the front. So don't worry if it doesn't work in one go. Now, when you're pregnant, I wouldn't take your foot out to the side. Keep your foot straight to the front because we don't want to create pelvic pains. But hip flexor stretch is absolutely beneficial in pregnancy. Now it's up to you. So remember what your level was before being pregnant and that's where I want you to be. So if this is um, too easy, you're going to take an elbow down, maybe even two. But if you know that that is pushing it, please stay upright because your ligaments are a bit more flexible in pregnancy. So we're not going to go and push it. You can do that after you've had the baby and then we can go mad. That's it, so just stretch it out. So it's the back hip flexor here that you're stretching and then gently bring it back in. So sit back with a little bit of momentum, get the other leg to the front, back knee further back so you get a nice opening. Again, feet straight rather than to the corner and just relax the hips so you get a nice hip flexor stretch up to you, you can bring an elbow down, but only if that is within your comfort zone. So in my first pregnancy I had slight pelvic pains and the hip flexor stretch sorted that out, so it can work to relieve pelvic pains. And then from here, gently come back up and bring the feet back together. Now we're going to go on to our other side. So turn yourself around and come onto your elbow. So you want your knees to be stacked beautifully, ankles too, and then ankles, hips and shoulders in one line, lift from the waist. You want to have again this lifting feeling as if there's a candle and you don't want to touch the flame. Breathe in here, as you breathe out, use this hand to get yourself up and reach up. Now just being here is effort, especially with the extra weight. So if you need a break, take it, breathe in. As you breathe out, I want you to hold the baby closer into the body, lift the pelvic floor. Breathe in, breathe out. Planks are really, really good in pregnancies, including side planks. Breathe in, breathe out. As long as you can do the pull in on the out breath. Two more. Last one. Well done, and gently slide down. Straighten yourself out. And again, we're looking for that gap under your waist here, so make sure that your hips are stacked beautifully, ankles are stacked, and you've got a nice 
light waste. I always say, imagine a macaroon, you know, those crumbly cookies, and put them under, their wa under your waist, and imagine that you can brush the macaroon, but you don't want to flatten it. And if you put your waist on there, that's exactly what you want, what you would do. So just keep it nice and light. Breathe in as you breathe out. I want you to float both legs. Again, if it's too hard, touch down with your toes, keep your heels lifted. That's it. Breathe in. As you breathe out, it's all about stability in this hip here. So we're going to walk to the front. Imagine there's a cup of tea on that top hip bone. You're going to keep it absolutely still. Breathe in, breathe out. That's it. You may have a preference. So some people like to kick forward, but they don't like to kick back. And I can see in their imbalance that their body do doesn't like it. So I want you to really focus that both sides are equal. So if you kick to the front to a certain distance, I want you to do the same to the back. If you feel you've got the balance, take your hands away. Breathe in, breathe out. Doing well, doing well. Last one, last one. And we're going to touch down, well done. So both legs together. And relax, take yourself up. Find your balance, breathe in here, reach, try and touch the side, the ceiling, and come over. Mermaid stretch, just stretching the side. Well done. So thank you for joining me in this video. Um, good luck with everything as it's the third trimester, you're not far off. And when you're ready and you've had your baby, please join us and watch our uh, postnatal video. Any questions about exercise and Pilates in your third trimester, just put it in the comment box below. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.